Senior Plasma Physics, Lecture 16. We now look at kinetic theory, and in particular, the distribution function, which in its general form is dependent on position, velocity, and time. Kinetic theory deals essentially with the motion of individual particles, but as we've seen in previous lectures, it's not feasible to track the motion of individual particles, so we adopt a statistical approach. Let's see how this contrasts with the fluid model. In the fluid model, our plasma also depended on position and time, and these were regarded as independent variables. But the fluid model could not really handle the motion of individual particles, so macroscopic parameters were used instead. For example, electron density, pressure, current density, temperature, and so on. But quite often, the distribution function of particles is quite important. For example, in discharge physics when working out the reaction rate coefficients. For example, a fluid model cannot distinguish between these two distribution functions, where there are some applications where this difference is quite important. The centerpiece of kinetic theory is the distribution function. If one can obtain the distribution function, then all the information about a plasma system can be known. There are seven independent parameters, three position, three velocity, and time. The position vector is given by this, in Cartesian coordinates, but it can also be cast in spherical, cylindrical, or any other coordinate system. Similarly, the velocity component can be given by this. The two coordinate system defines what is called phase space. It is a six dimensional space. So when we write a volume element in phase space, dv, then it's equal to dv dr, where in shorthand dr can also be written d cubed r, which is dx dy dz. And dv similarly can be written as d cubed v, as dvx dvy dvz. So when we write a volume element, dv dr, we mean this. Keep in mind that this really is a six-dimensional space, but no one can really picture a six-dimensional space. So what we quite often do is we present two three-dimensional spaces side by side, just to make it easier to visualize. Let's look at the meaning of the distribution function. Say we multiply the distribution function by the six-dimensional volume element of phase space. This means that it's the number of particles in a volume element dv in phase space. Let's symbolize that number of particles by dn. So another way of phrasing this is that the distribution function is the particle number density in phase space at time t. But say we only want the particle number density in real space, then we carry out the following integral, which essentially eliminates the velocity component. We can write this in shorter notation. We can also write the distribution function with the circumflex symbol on top, or we can just say f hat for short. This is called a normalized version of the distribution function. That means if we carry out the following integral, it comes out to unity. So now the interpretation of this normalized distribution function changes a little bit. It means that if we take the normalized distribution function and multiply by the six-dimensional volume element in phase space, then this means that it's the probability of finding a particle in that volume element at time t. If we take away the volume element, so we just have the normalized distribution function, then it means that it's the probability per unit volume of phase space of finding a particle at position r with velocity v at time t. The normalized function can also be labeled as a probability density function. Let's look at an example of probability functions that are nothing to do with plasma physics, just to make it more accessible. Imagine that a room contains 14 people whose ages are as follows. That is, 
One person is aged 14, one person 15, three people are 16, two people are 22, two people are 24, and finally, five people are 25 years of age. We can also generalize the number of people with a certain age in this way. N as a function of J means the number of people with age J. We can explicitly write this as follows. N14 equals 1, that is the number of people at 14 years of age is 1, and so on. We can also say that the total number of people, N, is nothing more than the sum of the number of people of varying ages in the room, that is the sum of N as a function of J, which has to equal 14. Let's now say that we select a person at random from that room, and we ask the question, what is the probability that person is aged 16? We can symbolize the probability of selecting a person of age 16 as P in brackets 16. We can write this as the number of people that are age 16 divided by the total number of people. In our case, there were three people aged 16 out of a total of 14 people. So we say that the probability is 3 out of 14, or 3 on 14. In general, we can write the probability of selecting a person with a certain age j as n as a function of j on the total number of people n. Because the total probability must equal 1, that means a sum of all n as a function of j over total n must also equal 1. We now ask the question, what is the average or mean age? We do it in the following way. We have one person that's 14 years of age. In brackets, this appears as just 14. Then we add it to one person who is 15 years of age. Plus, there are three people that are 16 years of age. So we have plus three times 16. There are two people that are 22 years of age. So we have plus 2 times 22, and so on. We obtain this total, and we divide by the total number of people in the room. That is, we get 294 on 14, which is 21. That means the average age in the room is 21. You'll notice that each age is being weighted by the number of people in the room of that age. For this reason, this kind of average is called a weighted average. So the general formula for the average age in the room is written as follows, where j with an overhead bar symbolizes average age and is given by the sum of the age j multiplied by the number of people with that age divided by the total number of people. This is the formula for a weighted average. But we've just seen from above that nj on n is nothing more than the probability of finding a person of that age. So if we replace nj on n with p of j, then the average age is equal to the sum of j multiplied by the probability of having an age j. But in plasma physics, we're not dealing with such small number discrete quantities. We're actually dealing with continuous quantities. Say that we are no longer dealing with such small and discrete numbers. Assume that our probability function, p of j, is variable and it depends on a continuously variable parameter j. Then now we can say that the weighted average of that parameter j, given by j bar here, is equal to the integral from zero to infinity in this case, of j multiplied by the probability of j. But we also know that the total probability has to be one. So the integral of the probability function p of j is equal to one. Let's now turn our attention back to the distribution function. We've stated before that it can be viewed as a probability function. Say we want to find the probability of a particle at position r and time t with velocities between v and v plus dv. This can be obtained by multiplying the normalized distribution function by dv. In the same way that we obtained the average age for the class of students in the example above, we now want to obtain the average speed associated with the distribution function. This is obtained by this expression, where the weighting factor 
is the variable v that multiplies the distribution function f hat. In practice, the circumflex symbol that goes on top of f, or the hat as we're calling it colloquially, is left off a normalized distribution function. So in the literature, it's quite possible that if there is a distribution function f without the circumflex, then it could still be normalized since some authors have a habit of leaving the circumflex out, in which case the average speed appears as follows. It's possible now to go back and re-examine the fluid model, the rate reactions associated with discharge physics in terms of the distribution function and its probability interpretation, but we will not do this here.